Good morning, Westside. He is risen. Woohoo. It's almost like it's Easter. Yes, good morning. And welcome to those here and welcome to those who are online. I'm not sure where I should be looking. There we go, it doesn't matter. But welcome to everybody uh, this very fine, beautiful Easter morning. Uh, this morning we welcome Pastor Jack to our pulpit. Thank you for coming, Jack. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And I also will be available for prayer right after the service if that is uh, wanted. I have an announcement. So in a couple of weeks, so that is on April the 14th, two weeks from today, Pastor Jana Vanderland will be coming to preach for the call to be our prospective pastor. Please be in prayer for Westside and for her as we collectively seek God's will for this. I must confess to being quite excited to hear and to, to be part of this. Are there any other announcements? Don't think so. Uh, we have a couple birthdays this week. Today is Magdalena Matos's birthday. And on Thursday is Nathan Winia. I believe I got that name correct. A couple of anniversaries. Marthine, Marlene and Phil Orr have their anniversary on Wednesday. And uh, Jake and Dee, Dee uh, have theirs on Saturday. And it's a milestone. It's their 50th. So, woohoo. I bet they're in a car, I think, driving back from Florida. That's an interesting way to celebrate your uh, anniversary. Are there any uh, items for the celebration, Chair? We, looks like we have a delegation. Good morning. It's Easter, so there's lots to celebrate today, but we're also celebrating because um, April 1st is uh, World Autism Day. So we celebrate, um, all of April is um, Autism Acceptance Month, and so you can wear red during April. Um, but on World Autism Day, we also wear red or a spectrum of colors to celebrate the spectrum um, of abilities and capabilities that people with autism have. So celebrating today. This is the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Awesome. All right, let's, uh, let's pray. Lord God, make your presence known in this place through our worship, our prayer, the reading of your word, and in the fellowship we shall enjoy. I pray for your anointing on Pastor Jack. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I shall light the Christ candle. And we have a responsive uh, call to worship this morning. Get that up. Children of God and people of promise, come and see the stone has been rolled away. God is with us. Jesus has defeated death. Followers of Jesus, hold fast. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Let's rejoice with all creation and worship the living God. Let's worship. We have a couple of lovely songs to sing. Please stand.
Good morning. morning. It's really good to be here with you. It's good to be celebrating Easter with you. My name is Jack, and I am chaplain at Providence Manor, and I always love being here and sharing the word with you. I need to say that I should explain my shirt. Uh, uh, I'm wearing it because it's Easter. This is a happy shirt. Uh, This shirt was a gift from Regina. When Regina was seven years old, growing up in Congo, her father was killed, and the family had to run. And they ran to some different countries, first with their mom, and then after some weeks, their mom disappeared too. And Regina and her five brothers spent the next four years in an orphanage which they did not um, experience as a happy place. So fast forward those four years, and we were living in St. Catharines. I was working in a church, and someone said, there's a lady who wants to meet you. She wants to talk with you about housing. And when I met Winnie, she said, I need a big house because I got six kids coming and we can't afford a big house in Toronto. And so we were able to be witnesses to Winnie's kids coming. They had to sneak out. It was one of those mornings where someone said, just go now. And they got on a plane and they came to Toronto and then they moved in just literally over the overpass from the church. And when Regina turned 13, then she uh, bought some cloth from Congo and with a friend, Regina sewed a shirt like this for each of the pastors of the church. And I get to wear this shirt on Happy Easter. There it is. That's the Easter happy shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful story. Thanks for, thanks for uh, encouraging me to tell the story. I was just going to wear it. Uh, we're going to start with a, with a prayer. Well, I'm going to start now because we already started with prayer. Um, I'm going to start my part with the prayer. And um, I want to follow in the leading that Jesus gave on Easter morning by drawing attention to everything around us, drawing attention to the earth, the sky, sunrise. I'd like to, I'd like to do the prayer now in, a, in the four directions, starting with the east. Uh, it's a Christian. I'll be praying from my heart as a Christian. And I'd like to invite you, if you're able and willing, to do the moving with me just standing right where you are to begin this particular morning prayer uh, facing the east. And then we'll go around the four cardinal points of the compass. And as I said to Doug earlier on, thank you for building this sanctuary in a way that is like exactly north so I know, I know where to stand. So if you're, if you're willing and able, I invite you to stand and face the east with me. And you can leave your eyes open too. You know, a lot of the time, probably most of the praying that we do is with our eyes open. It's still okay to close our eyes and pray sometimes, but we can keep our eyes open. Oh, great and awesome creator. Maker of light. You've given us eyes to see the light. You've given us skin to feel warm because of the light. And you've given us the experience of mourning. Thank you for this particular sunrise on Easter morning that enlivens us again, for your light that fills all the dark places, for the warmth that Easter brings into our hearts. Thank you, O God, for starting this day with light and joy and peace. And now we turn. O great creator, Lord over darkness, God who's present in the cold. When the night is long and the cold gets into our bones and we feel afraid, we cry out to you who have always been present. Thank you, Jesus, for being in the grave. Thank you for experiencing death. 
Thank you for taking upon yourself our brokenness, our rebellion, our sin, for meeting us where we were, for meeting us where we are, so that when the sunlight shines on us, we know that something beautiful has happened. Thank you, Emmanuel, for being with us in our darkness. Let's turn to the wax. We bless you, great creator God, who moves the sun across the sky to where at the end of the day, seeing the setting sun, our hearts are at peace. Thank you for hope that not only for this day, but also for our whole lifetime, we can look forward to rest. We can look forward to coming into a place, whether it's sleep for the night or ultimately the sleep of death, a place where you are, where you have been, where you have prepared the way, and you will welcome us and care for us gently, lovingly, and safely. Thank you for your gift of hope and peace. And we turn. Creator of the seasons, creator of the warmth that comes to us from the south, the springtime that comes to us after the winter, creator of activity that comes with the sound of the birds, that sound, the sounds of the geese, the sounds, the smells, the feel of the warming earth and the hope that this brings in us, that we can live this new day. We can receive from you the season that is to come because you have built into us everything that we need for life and godliness. Thank you, O God of hope, who gives us this day our daily bread, bread of the earth, light of our lives, hope now and forever, community to share all these blessings with by your gift and your grace, creator of all, our living Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, yeah, you may be seated. <clears throat> and now we examine ourselves in the light of the resurrection. We confess our sins that we may be made new in Easter hope. O great and righteous one, we confess that we stray from your perfect way of love and justice. We confess that we ignore the pain and suffering of others. We hold grudges and prejudices. We forget what we should remember. And we are distracted by things that we should release. We rush to be first instead of making way for others. You call us to be like children. But it's hard for us to let go of our power and privilege. Forgive us, merciful God. Deliver us from the darkness of our sin and raise us to new life in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Jesus, and not only us here, but throughout the whole creation, on this day of joy and life, we have confessed to God and to each other because we know that in Christ's death and resurrection, sin has no power over us. In Christ, guilt and shame have been faced and defeated. When we confess, we are forgiven and equipped to go forth and follow Jesus boldly into the world, trusting in God's power to make all things new. Receive the pardon of our risen Savior, and be at peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Any kids here this morning? Oh, good. Thank you. Hello, guys. I have a question for you. Do you guys have a pet? What do you have? Two tuxedo cats. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I wanted to tell you a little bit about my cat. My cat's name is Gandalf. Uh, you know why he's called Gandalf? Ah, indeed. When we got our Gandalf, which was three years ago now, he was absolutely bright white. But he's three years old now, and he's turned kind of gray. Now, one of the things about cats is they like to clean themselves. You probably watched that, right? How much cleaning is it going to take for Gandalf to turn white? I think you're right. I think there's no matter how much Gandalf cleans himself, will he ever turn white? I think you're right. Yeah, he's kind of turning gray like I am. <laughs> kind of. So I got thinking about that. That's kind of an interesting picture. Because uh, it talks about us being presented as whiter than snow when our sins are gone. And that's kind of interesting because we can't do that ourselves. And that's what we're celebrating here at Easter. Okay. Does that make sense? Kind of, kind of does. Kind of.
I know. <laughs> we were thinking the same. <laughs> anyway, let's pray. Father, I do thank you that you went to the cross and you died, but you rose. And in so doing, we can present it, be presented whiter than snow to you. In Jesus' name. We do need you, Lord. That's why we're here. Thank you for your gifts of your word, your spirit. This community of a cloud of witnesses that we may be reassured by you, built up by you and equipped by you for the rest of this day and for every day of our lives for as long as you continue to give us the breath of life. Please bring it all together, O oh God. Bring it all together. That we may recognize your presence and celebrate with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Reading from John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 20. And in the Bibles and the pews, it's page 1,685. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary... She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, don't hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. 
on the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and sighed, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. So it's a story about Jesus and more. We start with Jesus. Jesus is 100% God. And Jesus is 100% human. 100% human means Jesus got tired. Jesus got hurt. Jesus was happy. Jesus was sad. Jesus had to learn things. Jesus was born into the world where life was not great. To recognize Easter for what it is, we have to go back to what life was like when Jesus was born. When Jesus was born, life had a lot to do with death. It used to be that if anyone ever lied or cheated or stole something or betrayed someone, then they had to die for it. Or if they were in just the right place at the right time, in just the right kind of circumstances, maybe an animal or a bird could die instead of them. Repeat, repeat, repeat through all the days of our life. We were always waiting for the punishment, which was death. That is the world that Jesus was born into. That's the world that Jesus grew up in. That's what Jesus learned as a child. That's what Jesus saw as he grew up in community. He saw this happening all the time. Death was punishment. Life was like living under a great big dark storm cloud day and night. The cloud never went away, even when the sun was shining. That's just the way it was. I forgot to do something. I need to do it right now. That is, I need to credit Michael Wilkins and colleagues for the New International Version uh, AC Application Commentary Gospel of John and Murray Beasley for the Word Biblical Commentary Gospel of John and Jim Krogert for writing Was It a Morning Like This and I encourage everyone sometime today listen to Steve Bell singing Was It a Morning Like This that would be a great Easter gift but now I go back Life was awful. Life was dark. Life was just waiting for the inevitable punishment, which was death. But in the life of Jesus, things began to change. In the life of Jesus, when he had been arrested and he was being tortured and he was nailed to a tree, where he was very visible and where people could hear him clearly, Jesus was up there on a cross being punished for sin which was not his. Pretty much everybody knew that. He was not being killed for his own sin. He was a good man. And from the cross, Jesus cried out to God the Creator, God is Father. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. And before he gave up his breath, Jesus said in a voice that everyone could hear, it's finished. But then he was dead. He was gone. 
he was buried. And the sun set, and there was a night, and Jesus was gone. And then there was a whole day, and Jesus wasn't there. And the darkness was heavier than it had ever been before. The hope that had resided in Jesus, just by the fact that God was with us, that hope was gone. And then there was another night heavy, anguished, fearful. Jesus' body was cold inside a grave, just like everyone ever had been and ever would be. That's all there was. Outside the grave was just yuck. But then, Before the sun rose on the third day, the earth felt something. The earth felt something that it had never experienced before. The earth is the place where bodies go. The earth felt something move. The earth felt life inside the grave. And in its own way, the earth said, Woo, yeah! And to everybody around, it was just an earthquake. And the earthquake didn't last very long. It was like the creator of the earth had said, shh, quiet. Not yet. Jesus had changed everything for everyone who forever had been living in fear of death. Life would never be the same again, and the earth knew it. It was a very, very big, but the earth was still happy. The earth was Easter happy. The earth was Easter happy, like new puppy happy, like engagement ring happy, like first rain after a long drought happy, like kitten happy, puppy happy. The earth was happy. And in that graveyard, pretty much 1,991 years ago today, it wasn't just the earth that was Easter happy. Jesus was Easter happy too. And we see that when we see what Jesus did next. This most amazing triumph, this most amazing breakthrough ever had just happened and he was at the center of it. He did it. How was he going to announce what had happened? You can think of all the possibilities of announcing things. How would Jesus announce this? The way that he announced it shows how he showed his Easter happy. The description here was written by John. I, you might have noticed as I was reading it how I referred to the writer. John was there. John didn't consider himself worthy enough to name himself in the gospel. When John referred to himself in the gospel, he always said very gratefully, I'm the one that Jesus loves. That's it. That's as far as he went. You know, he even, you can tell he had a little bit of vanity though, because he did put right here in the Bible, when Peter and I ran to the tomb, I got there first. He said it twice, right? So John was there. He was at that tomb on that morning. And even though he went back to the house before Jesus showed himself to Mary, John and Mary, they spent a lot of time together. Over the next 50 years from Easter morning until the time that he wrote this, John and Mary Magdalene talked a lot. So when he wrote this down, he knew what he was talking about. And, you know, it's an interesting thing. I don't know if it's necessary to point out, but I will anyway. You know, the words that John wrote down in around 80, 85 uh, were not that old. We have a fragment, we have a fragment to this day of the Gospel of John from about 40 years after he wrote it. And we've got all these fragments all over the place of things that, you know, copies that were made. 
they all, they all are consistent with what John wrote the first time he wrote it. So what we have here is actually a description of what happened on Easter morning. So the disciples are gone, and there's just Mary. And she's sad. She's living in this darkness, right? This fear of death. The best possible thing that she could think of is that maybe she can find the dead body somewhere and then prepare it for burial. That's it. That's the best possible scenario she can think of. Her hope is gone. So she bends over, looks into the tomb, like looks inside the earth, and sees two angels. Where do angels come from? Where do angels come from? Heaven? How do angels come? God sends them. You know what happened that morning? Jesus, who is God, said in the heavenly host, I need two right now. What do you want us for? I want you to sit here in this cave. Just sit here. One here, one here. Okay? What do we do? Well, when Mary comes in, just ask this. Ask, woman, why are you crying? Okay? Woman, why are you crying? Okay, good, good, good. And then he goes and stands outside. And there they are. They came down from heaven for this. And it's the only thing they did. So Mary looks in, sad, and these angels look at her. Woman, why are you crying? And then she's looking at them. And she turns around. She notices someone on the other side. And she looks up. And he says, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She didn't get it. Jesus finally had to look her in the eye and say, Mary. Jesus was playing hide and seek. He was playing peekaboo. That is how Jesus announced the resurrection. Peekaboo is a game that we play with people that we love. Peekaboo is a game that we play because we're happy and we want somebody else to be happy. Peekaboo is part of the way that we're made. A little child needs to know that the people that she trusts, even though we can't see them for a minute, are still there. And we play peekaboo. We train each other to recognize how to live. Jesus was playing peekaboo with her. He shared his Easter happy with her. And as soon as Mary recognized that it was Jesus, then she was Easter happy too. And later on in the day, Jesus went to town after he first sent Mary to tell the other disciples, including John, who would have been sitting in that room. There they were, ten disciples in the room. And Jesus just showed up. When they were there with the doors locked, and John was quite honest, we were there with the doors locked because we were terrified of the people outside. Jesus just showed up. And what did he say? Peace be with you. Remember all through the Gospel of John, Jesus would say things like, there's going to be a time where you won't see me, and you're going to be sad. But then you're going to see me again, and you're going to be happy. Jesus said in advance that he was going to play peekaboo with them, and he did. He shared his Easter happy that way. Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth together in that small space in a cutout rock, testified on a God sized level because nobody else has access to heaven and earth at the same time except God. Testified that life has changed. Jesus had not just returned to continue life as it had been. The game of peekaboo testified to the fact that Jesus had brought them into something new and they had to learn life in a new way all over again. 
That's why when Mary tried to hold on to him, he said, no, not yet. Not yet. You're not ready. I'm not ready. Mary was accustomed to, as all the people around Jesus had been accustomed to, Jesus embracing them in their sorrow. That's what he did. That's what he does. Mary, you know the way that this, this uh, gospel is laid out, the way this story is laid out? Mary, you know, she had ideas about Jesus. Uh, if you're interested, look at Song of Songs chapter 3. This is, you know, Mary liked Jesus' embrace and she wanted more of it. So she was ready to say, let's carry on. Jesus said, no, it's not that way anymore. In the evening, when Jesus went to talk with the disciples, actually, sorry, I have to fast forward a week later. A week later, a disciple who had not been with the ten was with them. And when Jesus showed himself to Thomas, he said, Thomas, I want you to do something. I want you to see that life is different now. He said, I want you to put your finger in the hole where the nail was. And I want you to put your hand in my side where the spear went and pierced this heart. That was legal testimony to the fact that Jesus had been dead. Jesus was alive. He was alive. He was breathing. He ate the whole bit. He said, Thomas, put your hand in the hole where the spear went and pierced my heart. What, is, what has happened is death is no longer what it was. I live with a body that has a legal testimony to the fact that it was dead. Jesus was doing more than just peekaboo. Jesus was very, very serious. He was training them to experience life in a whole new way. That was all wrapped up in Jesus' breathing on them and saying, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Life is different. You are different. Death is different. Don't be afraid. Live in peace. Peekaboo develops our trust. It develops our trust that the one who cares for us is still caring for us even when we can't see them. You know, Jesus said to Thomas the week after Easter, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. After Jesus went back to heaven, most of us have not seen him physically. Sometimes we have visions. Sometimes people do see Jesus physically. But for the most part, nobody sees Jesus physically. The days of Jesus walking on earth are done. His body's back in heaven again. Now we live in an era where we have to believe that Jesus is with us even though we can't see him. This is the only reality that we live in. And Jesus started getting us ready by playing peekaboo with Mary. You didn't see me, did you, Mary? But I was here. You didn't recognize me even when I was standing right in front of you, did you? But I was here. Thomas, you didn't believe that I was around. You didn't believe that I was here in this room with you the whole time until I showed myself to you, did you? And now blessed is the one who believes and hasn't even seen. Because that is the new reality until Jesus comes back. I am so grateful. I, I, know, that, I know that I'm not the only one. We are the cloud of witnesses. I'm so grateful that I have experienced Jesus. I grew up with Bibles. I grew up, you know, Sunday school and the whole bit. And all that was good and it prepared me for the time when. For me, it was the first time was when I was at a, 
at a Christian summer camp and we were out on a hike in the mountains, sleeping under the stars. And one of the counselors there said, can you see God moving the shooting stars? Can you see how God is painting the sky with the northern lights? Can you see how God has put on this amazing show just to get our attention and show us how amazing he is? That was the first time that I recognized, whoa, he's here. He's with me. That was when I started praying. There have been times, lots of other times, when I felt alone, when I felt horribly afraid, when I felt like I had messed up so badly that there was nothing that could ever be done to redeem the situation that I had made for myself. And then, all I can say is, I recognize that he was with me. I grew up in a community of people who, and maybe, maybe some of you have said it, maybe you've heard it, community of people where when, especially it was after someone had died, and then, i just go with this, it was very specific, you know, when, when a man had died, and then it would talk with his wife, or we would be talking, listening to his wife, and she would say, I don't know how I got through it. I don't know how I got through the grief. But... What she was saying was actually, I know exactly how I got through it, right? Anybody heard that or said that? I don't know how I got through it, meaning I know exactly how I got through it. He was with me. This is how God wakes us up to himself. This is how Jesus introduces himself to us. This is how God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with us today. He's given us the stories. He's the one who whispers in our ears at the times when we're feeling absolutely terrified or darkened or cold or hopeless. He says, hey, I'm here. The one who warms our heart and puts a smile on our face, puts a song in our ears. Where did that even come from? Well, it came from him. And he's the one who says, as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. It is this most amazing reality, the Easter reality of Easter happy that God has put into our lives today, that he sends us out as his witnesses. The way that I usually see that happening is that as a witness, I just watch and listen. That's it. Just watch and listen. And then, as God wrote through his servant Peter, a time will come when someone will ask you for the reason for the hope that is in you. And when they do, answer them with gentleness and respect. Because in that moment, the person who is wondering about what's going on in you and what's going on around them is probably going to find themselves in a situation where they realize Oh, it's him. Jesus is with me. I just needed you to help me recognize it a little bit. The kingdom of God is here. We don't have to say to each other, Happy Easter. Well, we can. Because Easter is happy. Easter is an Easter happy that bubbles up within us like the earth quaked with its happy shriek. Whoa, yeah! Death is done. Life is new. The earth danced. The angels sang. The disciples ran. Life is good because of Easter. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God. Oh Jesus. All of this stuff is so big and from our little perspectives, each of us, it feels so strange. But it's real because we know that you have been with us and you've shown us yourself. Thank you for all those times when you have done with us what you did with Mary Magdalene. 
You, rec- you helped us to recognize you. And thank you for building in us a happy that often has been bigger than puppy happy and engagement ring happy and new baby happy. A happiness of Easter, that Jesus is alive and so we shall live too. Even when our bodies will show the signs of death, we will continue to live because death is no longer what it was. We join together today and we pray for those who are right now living in the valley of the shadow of death, who fear evil. And with this Easter happy that you have blessed our lives with, we pray for them. We pray that in the valley of the shadow of death, they may not fear because of the fact that you are with them. May your rod and your staff, your authority, your competence comfort them, even in the valley of the shadow of death. And we look forward to that day when you will bring us all together to see your face, to see your happy face, your happy, smiling, Easter happy face, because you love us so very much. We look forward to that day. Until that, come, that day comes, give us each day our daily bread, one bite at a time. And we will follow you as best we can in the strength that you give. In Jesus' name, amen.
could ask that you would join me in our congregational prayer. Dear Lord and Father of our Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you on this particular day of all days, but in every day we thank you for your Son, for the forgiveness of sins which his death assures us of, and for the promise of eternal life with him and you. Father, we bring before you the cares of our church family, the concerns we have for our brothers and sisters here. We pray, Lord, for all of those in long-term care, especially for Tim's Oma Freda. We bring before you all of the health concerns of our brothers and sisters here. There are many of them, but by name we mention Hedzer, Alberta, Donna, Julie, Linda, Betty, Arnold, Landon, Kelly, Bill, and Fred. Father, we ask for healing for them. For those who are connected to members of the uh, congregation, Lord, we bring before you Jeff's sister Julie, Linda's sister Jane, the Bovens' neighbor Shelley, Gwen and Miranda's uncle Rob, Linda's son James, Ryan's brother-in-law, Gary, Gloria's brother, Clarence, Alberta's brother-in-law, John, and his wife, Tina, Stephanie's sister, Sharon, and Nyla Jean's friend, Leanne. We ask also for comfort those, for those who are grieving recent losses especially for Christina and her father, Fred, as they remember her brother, Darren. We ask for safety for our sponsored child, Giuliani, and we ask for safety and for support of the missions of Mario and Yolanda and of Jonathan and Janice. We bring before you the offering cause that will shortly be announced. We ask for a blessing on all of those at Westside, especially for our college and university students. There are at least eight uh, who will shortly be preparing in foreign writing exams. I ask that you would bless the elders and deacons of our congregation, that you would bless all of those who are involved in support ministries and outreach ministries. For our administrator, Betty Ann, I thank you for those in the music ministry. We are especially thankful for those on the pastor search committee, and we ask that you would continue to bless their work. We ask that you would bless Pastor Vanderlan as she travels here to uh, preach for us, and that uh, you would bless that process. I ask for also a blessing for the work of my fellow members on the program director search committee. We thank you that Westside's 40th anniversary is coming up. Uh, besides preparation for that, preparing photos and preparing for the event, uh, maybe we'll be visited by some former members. Uh, we ask for a blessing on that and for safe travels. We ask that you would continue to bless the work of Geneva House and Momentum, of Steve and Julia's work in that area. We thank you for all of the classical appointments we have and also for the many ministers of the word who are available to lead worship here like Pastor Jack. Please bless and protect all of them. We ask for your blessing also for First CRC and Pastor Dan and our fellow churches in Classes Quinty. Please bless the mission to seafarers, world renew and resonate global missions. Father, in our city, our province, and our country, we ask for a blessing for his worship, Mayor Patterson, for our Premier, Mr. Ford, and our MPP, Mr. Sue, for our Prime Minister, Mr. Trudeau, and our MP, Mr. Gerritsen, for our parliaments and governments, we ask for wisdom and strength, also for Mary Mae Simon, our Governor General, and King Charles and his family, 
We ask for a blessing, for safety, and for wisdom in leading us. We ask for safety for Canadian troops abroad and those of the United Kingdom and the United States and our other Commonwealth and NATO allies. Please bless their missions and protect those members. For our country, Lord, we ask that we could take meaningful steps to heal our relations with First Nations and steps to build them up. And we ask that you would provide all of us with a shared vision of how our country can do well by all of its people. And we ask that we might accept a greater number of immigrants and refugees. For the world, Lord, we pray for the safety of refugees from all nations, and we ask for a decent life for them, for comfort and housing and employment and good days. We ask for an end to the innumerable wars and insurgencies ongoing in so many places. We ask that Russia would be obliged to retreat from the Ukraine. We ask that there would be peace in Syria, Iraq, Gaza, and Yemen, and in so many other places. And that through your spirit, the peace that we have grown up with and that we enjoy and have come to take for granted would both continue for us and grow into more spheres in the world. We give you thanks for everything we have. Our blessings are so many. And we bring before you the concerns known only to our own hearts. In Jesus' name and through your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm your duty deacon today, Sherry. As always, we have a chance every Sunday to um, give our offering for Westside Ministries that just goes for holding our church together and all the things that encompass that. But today, there's a special offering for Resonate Global Missions. Resonate Global Mission is focused on equipping the Christian Reformed Church for living and sharing the good news throughout churches, neighborhoods, and communities around the world. Every day, God is working in the lives of people all around the world. Resonate trains and sends missionaries overseas, and they are involved in church planting and campus ministries to help people in every nation discover God's plan for their church, community, and life. In other nations, we witness how God is transforming lives through mission-minded people who partner with Resonate Global Mission. From April 1st to 30th of this year, all donations will be matched dollar for dollar by a generous donor. The work of God's mission has changed a lot in the past few years, but you can help the Christian Reformed Church respond and adapt through your gift to Resonate Global Mission today. I just ask that you'd pray with me. Dear God, we praise you for the way that you share your love for all peoples, regardless of where they live or what challenges they face. We thank you for those with spiritual gifts for mission work, for creative thinking leaders who energize us to do what we can from our corner of the world. We want to build a world where your sacrifice of your son is honored and never forgotten. Amen. Please rise.
This blessing is a blessing to God because it's a blessing to us. It's an Easter happy. To Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before His glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through, all, through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. to go out and bless others.